Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance as all good to Shri Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to our morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we will be discussing from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Verse 2. We just started a new chapter and the chapter is entitled Dhritarashtra Quits Home and we are very happy to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami here with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you and all good to Shri Prabhupada. And March, we're still waiting for more devotees to roll out of bed <laughs> and join class. So I just sent a message and hoping that they will roll out soon and join on soon. <laughs> Is that what they do? They just roll out? <laughs> I'm assuming, Marge, I'm guessing, but I just said, please log on soon. They can't get up, so they just roll on. Just roll out. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they don't tumble off the bed and fall off the floor and bump their head much, I think we're in good shape. <laughs> if they bump their head, then they will go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll probably get a bruised head and that's going to keep them awake for quite some time. <laughs> You have an interesting group there. They're like the, they're like holy rollers. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I think the COVID kind of made you know made us rollers in bed. <laughs> well, here I am in the late afternoon of Mayapur. <laughs> Marge, are you in? Uh, oh, in Mayapur, Hari Bol, wonderful, Marge. Yeah, yeah it's four thirty. PM here, 4.35 PM. Wow. Yeah, they nice. finished. You guys are just uh, rolling out of bed. And <laughs> yes, Maraj. We're looking to pull down the shades. And you <laughs> <laughs> I think so. When it comes to the month of December, then it is going to be, you know, climbing down the chimney like Santa Claus. <laughs> Who's going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Marsh, you can start whenever you. Oh, wait, Fred should said something. Uh, just, just please accept a humble basis as a boss here, power play. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I'm missing the devotees in Harrisburg. I don't see Mr. Brett anymore. He used to be regular. Marge. It's so funny that you mentioned about him because he was actually on for class yesterday. He said he's been going through some challenges with um, a job and vehicle. And, uh, but he listens to your class uh, through Facebook. Oh, okay. Because he did mention to me, actually on class yesterday morning, he was mentioning, and I'm trying to remember what he said, but he was mentioning a point that you said in your class in the past few days that he reiterated it in the class yesterday morning. So that gave me the understanding that he's been listening to your classes through Facebook. But yeah, he's he's there. Um, Krishna is um, probably pure for doing some kind of purification, but he's there. And we keep in touch with him, Marge, especially Prakshit. He keeps, almost, I mean, every Monday, he, he keeps in touch with Dr. Brett. Okay. Good, good, good. Such a nice person. I'm, I met him in Gita Nagar. Yes. You Marge, know, we have about 11 attendees, and I think they are still rolling in. Would you like to start, Marge? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see the rolling in. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sorry, Marge. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bhagavatam is the first bath. <laughs> yes. We can get we can get, we can get the shower of the nectar of Shumai Bhagavatam. And then I'll try to Put a little soap in there. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, 
For some, it might be a good sponge scrubbing, Maharaj. Yeah, we have, we have to get out the, the hard bristle scrub brush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she would have really liked that. <laughs> Especially my group. <laughs> My group turns on, they, they come online and make sure the cameras are not on so they go do something else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Marge, to be actually, if it's any concession, Marge, it's almost every group. <laughs> I was there. Didn't you see my name? <laughs> <laughs> what was the class about? Well, it was a good class. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, much. I think it's in every group that you know it it comes on and the camera's not on and we don't know whether they're just playing it and they're in a different in another room. <laughs> Putting on taking get the kids to school. Yeah. <laughs> Eating breakfast. <laughs> Cooking for them, packing their breakfast, putting on the school bus. And they come just in time. And I say, thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> Mother, Mother Scarlett is having a ball hearing this conversation and laughing, almost choking. <laughs> yeah, she, she understands things. <laughs> <laughs> She's from the old school. <laughs> <laughs> She's laughing away. Yeah. We have now 13, Marat, so it's slowly going up. It's slowly going up. Yeah. Some heavy rollers in there. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Yeah. All right, I think 13, since we got, it's the 13th chapter we can start. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Okay. All right, here we go. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Shrimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter 13, verse number 2. Yavata Krita Vam Prasnam Shatrakao Saravadrataha Jataika Bhaktir Govinde Tabyas Choparatmaha Mamaha. Okay, translation. After asking very qu various questions and becoming established in the transcendental loving service of Lord Krishna, Vidura retired from putting questions to Maitreya Muni. Purport. Vidura retired from putting questions before Maitreya Muni when he was convinced by Maitreya Muni that the Sunam Bonum of life is to be finally situated in the transcendental loving service of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, who is Govinda, or one who satisfies his devotees in all respect. The conditioned soul, the living being in material existence, seeks happiness by employing his senses in the mode of materialism, but that cannot give him satisfaction. He then searches after the supreme truth by empiric, empiric philosophical speculative method and intellectual feats. But if he does not find the ultimate goal, he again goes down to the material activities, engages himself in various philanthropic and altruistic works, which all fail to give him satisfaction. But neither fruit of activities nor dry philosophical speculation can give one satisfaction because by nature, a living being is the eternal servitor of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. And all the Vedic literatures give him direction towards that ultimate end. As the Bhagavad Gita 1515 confirms this statement. Like Vidura, 
an inquisitive conditioned soul must approach a bona fide spiritual master like Maitreya. And by intellectual inquiry, we must try to know everything about karma, food of activities, jnana, philosophical research, and supreme truth, and yoga, the linking process of spiritual realization. When it was not serious inclined to put questions before the spiritual master, you need not accommodate a show Bible spiritual master, nor should a person who may be a spiritual master for others pose to be so if he was unable to engage his disciple ultimately in the transcendental loving service of the Lord Sri Krishna. Vidura was successful in approaching such a spiritual master like Maitreya, and he got the ultimate goal of life, bhakti, from the Buddha. Thus, there was nothing to be known further about the spiritual progress. On the Gyan Kamiran Basya, the Gyan Kamiran Savakaya, Daksun Militam Yenatas, my Sri Guru Vedavaha, Nama Um Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutalais, Prima Tiva. Tivaram, the Swami, Tinamini, Namaste, Saraswati, Devi, Rodamani, Pacharani, near the Sesa, soon near the Hari, Pasyat, here there is a time. One Chikopa, the Rubish, Jati, Bah, Sindhu, the Ava, Java, Ditana, Harane, Yo, Vaishnavi, Yo, the Mahona, Mother, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Nityanam, Sri Advaita Gita, Harshi, Rasa, Vibor, Bhaktavinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, everybody. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare. <clears throat> so, um, Srila Prabhupada reiterates throughout the beginning of the purport that nothing material can give one satisfaction, no matter how grand, how lofty, how well thought out, how variegated it might be. And the simple reason why, and it's just logical, is that because we cannot enjoy something that is contrary to our nature. We can't find satisfaction when it's something that is contrary to our nature. By nature, nature means what is natural, it comes from the same word. And what is natural is our own nature. So our nature is constitutionally, spiritually, conditionally material. And conditioned nature is not a real nature, it's an accepted nature that we take on when we take on an identity of a material body. No matter what that identity will look like in terms of the varieties of material bodies that are available. Still, it's not our nature. We are all pure spiritual beings. And therefore, we find we can only find satisfaction with something that is of the same nature as we are. Therefore, anything material or within the three modes of material nature cannot give satisfaction to the living entity. A living entity may pose to be satisfied with something material. But that, that uh, effect will wear off in a very, very short time, even, just, even before it even takes root and it starts to diminish. So, uh, therefore, it becomes easy to understand that the question we ask is well, if there's something that is not my nature and I'm trying to enjoy it, then that then I should give that. But then I have this intensity to want to be happy, to want to be satisfied. What is my nature? Well, then that opens up the door to a whole realm of possibilities. And that is anything that is the same nature as I am will give satisfaction. And spirit, as long as also with, with material, is also very good. So all of the variegated activities that come within the realm of spiritual and the contact with that energy itself begins to open up a sense of satisfaction 
and we lose um, the anxiety once I one brings about by trying to enjoy something contrary to the nature of the material. So here, and then this is a very simple, but a very logical first word. And one starts to ask questions regarding where can I find that satisfaction? And because spirit is subtle, spirit is uh, not perceivable by any of the material means, such as the mind, the senses the intelligence or even the imagination, one has to learn the science connecting with the spiritual energy from one who is connected with those spiritual energy. Well, not just someone who is connected, but one who is fully connected with those spiritual energy. And that's Krishna who represented as the bonafide spiritual master. And there, well, that's why we say that spiritual life begins when one Take shelter of Krishna's representative to go to the spiritual master. Prior to that, although we may be doing activities in devotional service, we are practicing to begin. We're getting a feel of the water, just like when you go to a beach side. Um, you may try to test what is the temperature of the water. What is the what is the uh, um, what what the water contains? Mm -hmm. it is it clear? Does it have a lot of debris? In other words, uh, we get a feel for the water before we dive in and actually start swimming. So, getting a feel for our activities in spiritual life precedes our taking shelter of Christian. Krishna in the form of the spiritual master. Once we decide to dive in, then one takes shelter of Krishna in the form of the spiritual master. And then he learns the process of how to execute devotional service and what are the activities of devotional service. Both, what should I do and how should I do it? Both of these things. So what are the and and then, of course, the next question is, why should I do it? And that it's also answered by the spiritual master. So then one becomes uh, fixed in awakening that the satisfaction that one is longing for. Because without satisfaction, there's no happiness in life. False sense of satisfaction just convinces the mind that I'm okay. But in the back of the mind, um, and one is knowing that I'm not okay, but I, I'm doing what everybody else says that I should do in order to be okay. Therefore, I must be okay. Uh, although the experiences are not there, one is accepting it because everyone else is doing it. There's a thing called A Hundred Monkeys. There was a book written with that particular title, Hundred Monkeys. And it was a series of short stories about a person's life in various situations. And one of the stories illustrated the point of the title, A Hundred Monkeys. And what that is that one monkey will do something or eat something, and then another monkey will see it and he'll do the same thing. A third monkey will see that other monkey doing it, and he'll do it, and then goes down the line. And then as you get down the line more and more, everyone is do all the monkeys are doing it, but nobody knows why they're doing it. Why you're doing it? Because the first monkey did it, second monkey did it, the third monkey did it. And then uh, even the 99th monkey has done, done it, so the 100th monkey automatically does it because monkeys see, monkey do. So that's uh, that's material life. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I can enjoy like this because I'm told this is where the enjoyment is. And so I go for it, but I don't feel the enjoyment. 
But even people who are doing it, they're not getting any enjoyment either, but they're, they have to be convinced that it's the right thing to do. Otherwise, they can't do it. If they can't do it, they're lost. So they have to convince themselves that they're happy or they're getting something from it. There's an old, there was an old saying where it was more like a rhetorical, kind of like a joke almost. Are we having fun yet? So someone is asking another, another person their way, are we having fun yet? Yeah, sure, we're having fun. But nobody knows what the fun is. And nobody's having it. But because we're doing things that are supposed to give us that happiness, then we must be getting that happiness. I must go to work because working is, you know, it gives me satisfaction. But I'm going to work with people I don't like, <laughs> who I don't even know. And I'm spending most of my day in such an environment, a lot of times just doing that. And I'm thinking, well, this is not so bad because I'm getting some money. From it. So you kind of like, just like it's almost like accepting something that you don't like. And if you do it long enough, you start to like it. Sometimes there's a type of certain kinds of food stuffs that when you first taste it, you think, oh, I'm not going to eat that again. And then somehow or other, you find up winding up doing it again. And you keep doing it. And then you have to why you think, it's not so bad. <laughs> so yeah, it's, we're conditioned to think that what we're doing will give us happiness, will give us good health, will give us pleasure, will free us from anxiety. So nobody's getting it, but everyone is faking like they're getting it. It's just more like a, a uh, satire where a person is pretending to be something that they're not, and they pretend so good that they actually believe that it's actually them. It's like sometimes you see actors on the stage, they play the part uh, that they're playing so good, they actually start to identify with the part and take on that particular personality as their own character. And other people even see them the same way. But it has nothing to do with them, it's just the role they're playing. So we play this role of enjoying in this material world but nobody's happy. <laughs> and Prabhupada would say over and over again, nobody in the material world is happy. And we would emphasize that. And so one time Prabhupada was emphasizing this point over and over in one discussion with his devotees. And one devotee said, well, you know, we hear Prabhupada in the mode of goodness, there's happiness. No, Prabhupada immediately responded, yes, but the mode of, mode of goodness is characterized by knowledge. And that knowledge teaches you there's no happiness. <laughs> so Prabhupada responded in a clear way to let them know that that happiness that they think they're getting is simply a relief from suffering. If you are hungry, that's painful, it can be. And if you eat something, you satisfy your hunger and you feel some satisfaction. And you also get some energy, may also get some happiness. So what do you do? You're eating to counteract something that is a misery. So the counteracting of misery is not happiness. It's, all, it's what it is. It's just counteracting of misery. Real happiness is the nature of the soul's existence which is not dependent on anything external. Therefore, those who are actually fit, fully situated in devotional service, they are feeling satisfaction at every moment, not by what they're doing, but because they are serving the Lord. That's all. They're serving the Lord and they're performing devotional activities. They're happy, they're feeling satisfied because 
internally the soul is connecting with the supreme soul in devotional service and there's where the happiness is experienced on that level so um this this purport he kind of teaches us that you know, don't try in any way because the tendency of the material or even some devotees they like to think that yeah i just have to continue to make my plans and i'll be happy <laughs> so they wind up plan making their whole life and then nothing ever matures from that so don't make plans to be happy make plans to serve that's it just make plans to serve and if you if you're serving nicely and you're absorbed in your service you're going to feel satisfied by it the sense of satisfaction that comes both on the mental level on the intellectual level and of course on the spiritual level even on the physical level that satisfaction is there but in order to awaken that for those who haven't reached that stage yet they have to approach the spiritual master and get directions from the spiritual master on the science of bhakti because bhakti is a science it's the science of the soul's connection with the supreme soul so when you speak of science sometimes you think in terms of laboratory where a scientific experiment is being conducted so in a laboratory you have the ingredients to make up the experiment and then you also have to have the laboratory conditions which allow for the experiment to develop and to be successful the bhakti is a science it's serving Krishna in the mood of pleasing Krishna and by serving Krishna in the mood of pleasing Krishna we absorb in the essence of bhakti now even if you're serving Krishna and you're not consciously trying to please Krishna but somehow or other you perform the activities to please Krishna still there is benefit but when you're consciously aware that my activities is meant to please the Lord and so let me endeavor in that way then it becomes more satisfying and fulfilling how can I please Krishna and then you have to know in each and every varieties of service what is the thing that pleases Krishna about that service of course the essence of all service is love and the desire to please Krishna is what satisfies Krishna but we should also learn how to do the service in such a way that it is done in a way that is acceptable or offerable. Just like sometimes when we are doing deity worship and we're cooking, um, we want to cook for Krishna. So we cook something and we look at it and say, well, this is not so good. This is not offerable to Krishna. Let me, let me start again and do something nicer. So a devotee may also see that he wants to make the best possible offering in forms of the quality of which he offers the food, the food or even any service. So Krishna will be satisfied in that way. In other words, we want to, Prabhupada said the best is meant for the best person. So that, that's a feature of bhakti to make it as nice as possible for the pleasure of the Lord. And in a general sense, also for the pleasure of the Lord's devotees. So the devotee wants to do that. And so they perform their activities with that consciousness. In them. Whether it's cleaning, preaching, cooking, um, you know, managing a temple. It's, trying to do it in the best possible way learning 
the art of whatever service you're doing. Each service has a particular quality about it that can be acquiesced by understanding that service. And devotees also think, where can I learn more about the service that I'm doing so I can make it even nicer? That's also a feature of bhakti. When we are devotees not satisfied just to get things done, I think some of the most unsatisfying experiences is that, is that when somehow or other we don't take the necessary uh, time and attention to chin our rounds nicely, we're more like in a hurry, and we finish our rounds, and then we don't feel so satisfied because we really didn't put in the bhakti or the attention that we should have it was more like completing the activity. And then we, we say, oh, tomorrow I'm going to be better. So, yeah, we learn. So satisfaction, happiness, fulfillment can only be found according to our nature, which is the spiritual nature, which is the process of devotional service to the Supreme Lord offered through the spiritual master who is Krishna's qualified uh, emissary who takes our service and offers to Krishna. Okay, so this, this is a very uh, interesting. If you go down the page a little, you can see a little bit about the second paragraph there and see what else is being said here. And then, yeah. And the Prabhupada wants to make the point that there are persons who simply accept the spiritual master so they can be known as a disciple of a particular spiritual master. They're really not interested in learning anything. Uh, they, uh, Prabhupada said, don't, don't keep your spiritual master like a pet dog. Like that, you know, you throw him a bone every once in a while, you give him a donation every once in a while, on his birthday you give him some presents, but the rest of the year you don't talk to him, you don't ask any questions, and you don't make any endeavor to, uh, to learn from him. And, and then the devotee thinks, well, why do I have to learn from my spiritual master? You know, I can read the books and, or I can learn from other devotees. Yeah, that's nice. But if you want to learn perfectly, in other words, spiritual master is empowered to guide the disciple according to how best he can do in this guided. And that was brought out by Srila Prabhupada in one. Question when someone asked Prabhupada, do you know every, any, everything, Prabhupada? Prabhupada, do you know everything? Prabhupada said, I am not Christian, but I know what I need to know. That's what he said. He know when he says, I know what I need to know. In other words, he knows his service to Krishna and how to do that. And that is to engage his disciples in such a way that we can move them along the path back to Godhead. So yeah, one should not simply have a spiritual master. Well, I have a name. I was there at the initiation. I gave some my doctrine, you know. And uh, unfortunately, we have that a lot in today's society. Some people either are afraid to speak to their spiritual master, knowing that he may say something to destroy their spirit, their sense gratification. Or they just don't think it's important to contact the spiritual master. Unless you, if you're on a pure, if you're a pure devotee and everything is clear and you're operating on that level, then that's fine. But that's rare. 
That's real. And then you're never not in touch with the spiritual world. You always are by your vision. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Mike, for such a wonderful class. Really amazing, amazing points. And I'm hoping that we can get a nice uh, questions here, um, especially since Sri Prabhupada's purport talks about questions and inquisitiveness. So let's hope we can get some good questions coming through. We'd like to end, uh, request devotees, if you have any questions, you know, any clarification, please, uh, you can either, um, you can raise your hand since we have about 20 people online and I don't want to miss anybody. I think there's already one. Okay, there is one question already, Maharaj, and, the, and, I'll, and I'll read it. Dear Guru Maharaj, Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur says in his Madhurya Kadambini that devotional service in the beginning is localized and then Maya is all pervading and that and that the stage of Nishta, Maya is at some distance that devotional service, sorry, that devotional aspect is slightly growing. Could you please shed some light on this topic so I can understand it better? Yeah, the, the, uh, when one makes advancement to the stage of Nishta, they're pushing back the effects of, of Maya's influence. And therefore, localized means now it's, it's more... It's not so localized anymore in Maya, but Maya will look for opportunities to uh, trip up the devotee before one is surrounded by Maya all the time. So now they're moving forward, they're going through the different stages. They've gone through, Mishta is actually the first stage out of the nine stages. So there might be more explanation to that point in terms of the question ultimately comes is how Maya affects the devotee on the, on the, in the beginning stage and what is, what is the effects of Maya in the stage of Nishta? That's essentially the question. Am I correct? Yes, Marge. I, I think she wants to... Um, what, is, is Nana Shringalila online? Probably she can shed some light if, she would, if she's able to speak that is... Okay, yeah, Maj, I think what she's trying to say here is that at first <clears throat> it's localized, and when one comes to, to, to the stage of Nishta, then Maya kind of drifts away while the devotional creeper is growing, and could you shed some light? Well, yeah. Spiritual life means to uh, remove the influence of Maya. And as, as we make advancement, we're pushing back the effects of Maya. What was once something that we were easily uh, attracted to, now no longer is there. So Maya still will be there until you get to, to the love of God. But it's more, it becomes more subtle, Maya's attack. In the beginning, she, she's like, we can't even distinguish Krishna from Maya no? in the beginning. So. Let me see what she said. She says, thank you. I have to understand these levels more. Yes. Yeah. Nishta means fixed. Nishta means on that stage, I'm, despite whatever happens, I'm fixed. Marsh, just to, to piggyback uh, on, on Nashring Leela's question, I'm trying to understand it a little better. Just what does the, what does the term beginning in localize mean? Like the word localize means what, Marsh? I'm trying to understand that. I'm, I'm, I'm also trying to speculate on that meaning, but I think it means that um, localize means in the local area. <laughs> Maya pushes, you're pushing Maya back by your advancement. And now it's not so much she's local, but she's there and she comes in different ways. Before, we're always in Maya. 
at the beginning. <laughs> it's like there's no difference between what we're doing and Maya. But as we make advancement, we're pushing back the effects of money. So she becomes less localized, but more, more uh, coming to us in different ways. That's what Thank I'm getting. You. Sri Devi Mataji, would, would you like to ask a question, Mother? Yes, please. Can you hear me? Yes, now you're very audible. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, on this question of Nishta that uh, Narsingha Leela raised, I'm uh, wanting to know whether in Nishta also, there are levels of nishta, like one is fixed in chanting their rounds, but not fixed in service, or one is fixed in chanting their rounds and fixed in service, or one is fixed in rounds, chanting their service, and can defend the philosophy perfectly. What are, uh, I mean, what are, the, what are, are there stages of nishta like that? Real nishta means the steadiness of being engaged in devotional service. That's the actual definition of Nishta. Mm. The different kinds of devotion. One is one is steady in the execution of their devotion. Mm. So it's it's the Nishta of Bhakti, not the Nishta of this service or that service. So, like for example, if one is just able to chant one's rounds, and that's the only thing. That they are doing. That doesn't, uh, mean, that doesn't mean they're on the platform of mission. Right, right. So you're just getting uh, to be uh, steady in your rounds, but that doesn't mean you've reached nishta. I just explained what nishta means. Try to remember, try to hear. Nishta means fixed in devotional service. So one must have a service in which one has become fixed up in that service. Whatever the service is, become fixed up. That's nishta. Nishta means steady, not, not movable. Maya may attack, I'm not going to go away. Maya may attempt, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go for it. I'm fixed. I'm engaged. Before that is an art and nivriti. And then because the anarthas is still there, they knock one outside, they knock one out of devotion or service. Mm -hmm. One who's fixed in devotional service, steady in the execution of devotional service, is not going to be swayed by anything. They're going to stay fixed no matter what. Steady in their devotion. Their devotion is steady. It's not so much the service, it's their devotion that's steady. Ah, okay. It takes the form, it's, it takes the form of service. Mm -hmm. So one may, under different circumstances, have to serve in different ways, but it's the mood of bhakti and the mood of uh, surrender to the, to the instructions of the spiritual master, which constitutes that steadiness. Yeah. They're not going to go away. <laughs> They're fixed. Right. They get up, they chant around, they do the service, they go here, they go there, they do this, they do that. They're fixed. Maya comes along and tempts them. They're not going to. They're not going to go for it. Hmm. Of course, they can fall down in Nishta too. That's possible. Hmm. You can fall down in Ruchi. You can fall down in Akshakti. But down on those stages, you fall down when you commit offenses. Okay. So one has to be careful on any stage they're in that could, by committing offenses, they can slip in their execution of the law. Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, that's, uh, that's clear. Thank you. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. My humble obeisances. Thank you for the question. I learned something too, Sri Devi. Thank you so much. Any uh, questions from other devotees that you would like to ask? You could uh, raise your hand and I can um, call upon you. Marge, um, the 
the purport started off with Vidur, you know, um, uh, asking various questions. And then in the middle of the purport, Shri Prabhupada says that one who is not seriously inclined to put questions before a spiritual master need not accommodate or show bottle spiritual master. And then you spoke, Maharaj, about how, you know, when devotees, they, you know, even if they don't see the spiritual master and now with that COVID, you know, pre, post, whatever COVID, there are situations where, you know, devotees cannot keep in touch with the, of their guru for whatever reasons. Then in that situation, Maharaj, how can they put questions forth? And if they are not putting questions forth, even to the seniors, how, what happens to that person's devotional creeper, Maharaj? Rupa Goswami explains when he describes the 64 activities of bhakti, the first five are all in relationship to the spiritual master. And these are these are the rule, these are the regulatory principles. So the first one is to approach a bona fide spiritual master. The second one is to surrender to him and take initiation. Uh, the third is to engage in service under his guidance. And the fourth is to inquire uh, regularly on how to proceed in one's devotional service. So that's mentioned in an act of devotion. So people don't do that. And you don't know, the spiritual master doesn't know. How are they doing? So we set up this kind of like mentorship system to kind of give them a little bit of a localized uh, care program so they can be more accountable to what they're doing and more able to overcome any difficulties simply by taking advice from a qualified senior devotee who reports back to the spiritual master on how those persons he's taking or she is taking care of is doing. So we set up this mentorship system as a way to uh, connect that person with the spiritual masses through this. Because pe people don't understand. Maya is very strong. Maya is really strong. And she's also very subtle. And the subtleties of Maya, uh, we can't even see. And we just, we're starting to think that, you know, well, I'm okay. As soon as you think you're okay, it's an indication you're not. <laughs> so so when, and we have to stay very much fixed in consciousness on this associate and the instructions of the spiritual master. And Maya will always present something to confuse us, to trip us up, to look like Krishna consciousness. And a lot of times we wind up going through them. Or we just get lazy in our execution of the emotional service. We become enthusiastic in our material activities and routine in our, in our spiritual activities. Yes, Marcus, it's, it's, um, thank you for mentioning about Maya not only being strong, but being very subtle <laughs> because she yeah. finds the smallest of the smallest of the smallest of the smallest hole. And it's like, we don't even know how she creeps in. It's so scary. And, 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 and when you were speaking about how she creeps in, I was remembering uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami's words that when we get comfortable, that's when she creeps in. <laughs> right. Yeah. And comfort is my way of saying, hey, you're doing good. You finally got to the comfort zone. Don't you realize that this is the goal of Krishna consciousness to be comfortable? So true, Maharaj. Thank you. Sri Devi, please go ahead and then we'll go to Namrata. We have to be diligent in the execution of our devotion and service. And one of the one of the qualifications of a devotee is not to waste a moment. 
uh, dear Guru Maharaj, I have a follow-up question regarding service and being steady in one service. Is it that different situations we might have to do different kinds of services, and that's what gets that? Because many times I just feel. I'm just muddling along. When am I going to really, really get a grip and actually begin my service? I'm just, uh, you know, like a like a rolling stone gathers no moss. All right, this situation demands that I give class. Okay, I give class. Then that situation demands I do that. Then I do that. But I'm not really uh, like, you know, like when we, we know how some people like in and day out they're making garlands for the past 40 years they're making garlands and they're just getting more and more expert in that and i think when am i ever going to get a grip on some service and really get my you know teeth into it and really start that's the question i want to try huh? that's the question i've been asking when are you going to do it <laughs> <laughs> Krishna Chaitanya, oh my God. Guru Maharaj, I'm the beggar asking you, Guru Maharaj. I don't know, I'm waiting on to Tell me when you're ready. <laughs> I can't wait to get back to Mayapur and meet you, Guru Maharaj. Please kick me on the head and put some sense into me. I tried that, it didn't work. <laughs> Maybe you have to get a stick and beat me some sense into my head then. No, the sticks just break. Anyway, I hope we we'll at least by 12th. That's what my dad is saying. Uh, by 12th, he's willing to let me go. So hopefully I'll be back on 12th. Oh, okay. Good. The uh, ninth begins uh, Kartik, you know, so you should definitely every day perform the, uh, the Kartik Bratha. At least sing the song and offer the candle. They have a little picture or a deity of Krishna with Mother Yasoda and do the, do the Dhammadarasta. If you can gather some people together and do it together, that would be the best. Don't miss to miss one day of the this is a Shankaracharya stronghold. All uh, impersonalists, you know, this whole institution is all based on Adi Shankaracharya's teachings, the Gurukul, the temple, everything. So where we are now? I don't know what Krishna is doing, putting me here. Well, it's not that bad. Look for devotees to associate with. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Thank you for the question, Sri Devi. Namrata, you can go ahead with your question, Mataji. Thank you, Anse Mataji. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Actually, Anstya Mataji kind of read my mind. What what uh, what you asked is exactly what I was thinking. I was just framing my sent, I mean, question, and you asked the same thing. Uh, but just adding to that, uh, many times uh, in, especially in India, I have seen that uh, disciples. Uh, there are a lot of disciples uh, who are initiated by one guru, and they are uh, executing the some sort of. Uh, devotional service but because they are in the moment they are uh, executing the service but uh, because of the lack of um, association of uh, their guru they don't know that uh, this is what they're supposed to do or not so how a disciple understands that like, uh, especially when uh, there are a lot of disciples from a guru like in India, like Jay Puta Kamar, there are a lot of disciples. So I, I can't, I mean, we have your association daily, so I, I can't really think of the situation. How would be, how they would be uh, rendering that? Well, if they're really serious, they'll make an inquiry. 
either to the spiritual master or to a senior devotee, to another spiritual master who is who is also the dark brother of their spiritual master. It's a matter of if the situation makes it difficult, you have to make some effort. If you don't make the effort, then you think, well, it's just like a person is trying to do something and they fail in doing it. So they think, well, I failed. So I failed. But then another person thinks, well, I failed, but I'm going to try again. And maybe I'll try a little different way and see if it works this way. And then if it doesn't, they do another way. In other words, the person who really wants to get the answers, they'll get the answers. They'll get it, no doubt. They may have to try different avenues in order to get that answer, but they'll get it because Krishna is in the heart and Krishna knows this is what they need. So Krishna will arrange for them to get that answer. But sometimes it's not the same way that they normally got answers or the way that everyone gets answers. They might have to work a little bit at it. And the person who created the sewing machine, his name was Mr. Singer. So he failed hundreds of times, but he didn't give up. And because he was so determined to do it, he got the answer to the, to the, to the difficulty he was experiencing in a dream. The Lord gave the answer in a dream. He delivered this strong desire to, to achieve. Uh, there's another one. Who's that person? Uh, I forgot. The person who started, uh, I think, Facebook or somebody, not Facebook, or one of those things. One of those social medias. WhatsApp, Guru Maharaj. You told us about WhatsApp. Yeah, the WhatsApp person. Everything he tried didn't work. And people were thinking, what are you talking about here? But he didn't give up. Now he's, he's, they're all looking up to him now. But in bhakti, you're guaranteed success because everything's there. Krishna is there, the spiritual master is there, the answers to your questions are there. You just have to make the endeavor. And sometimes Krishna passes a devotee to see how sincere they are, but making it a little bit more difficult for them to achieve what they need. But one should see that this is a this is a, a challenge. One should accept bhakti as a, as a opportunity to excel, to see how they can do it, how they can overcome the difficulty. We have difficulties chanting our rounds. We should think, oh, let me pray. Let me offer prayers. Let me let me uh, hear you know lectures about how to improve my job. You know, they make endeavors to um, to increase the quality of their chanting. Not like, well, this is going on this way, I can't do anything. So, negativity or lack of positivity brings about no result. There's no excuse. You just have to use your intelligence facilities and somehow or other get that answer you need to get. There's a nice book by Bhakti Maharaj Swami called Saffron Path. And he, he's described his walks across uh, Canada. He walked across Canada four times. He walked, walked across Ireland one time. He walk, walked across uh, Israel. He walked across the United States. Walking thousands of miles, so many obstacles so many difficulties, so many opportunities for preaching. 
But he was just determined. It didn't matter what happened. He's gonna he's gonna do that walk no matter what. And his determination brought so much amazing results, not only for himself but for the people he met. So if you're not determined in Krishna consciousness, and that comes from getting answers also, you have to see what are the resources, where can I find the answers? Not necessarily always from one place. Mm -hmm. But simply by the strength of your desire, you'll get the answer. And you'll become successful if you stay fixed in this process. Uh, I posted a, uh, I posted a statement by Krishna the other day, I think it was two days ago. It's from the Brahma Samhita. It's Krishna speaking to Brahma. And he speaks about success in bhakti. Um, I wish, does anybody have their, that statement on their computer that I posted? I think it was today is the eighth. I think I posted it on the fourth or fifth. It's, it's got the Brahma Samhita reference to it. Guruji, is it Brahma Samhita uh, 5.56? Just read that. In Krishna's statement to Brahma, he sums up the whole process of success in Bhakti. Brahma Samhita, fifth, can, five, fifth chapter, obviously, and 59th verse. Somebody find it. I'm sure you can find it. Uh, yes. Guru, uh, Guru Maharaj, I found it. I'll read it. No, no, let's get it posted on a, maybe, uh, uh, I'll assume you can post it. Five. Yeah, Namrata Mataji, if you send it to me by the link, I can um, post it and share it. If you, if, you, if you want to put it on this chat here, then I, I can uh, definitely. Actually, I posted it on the Instagram. That's why I could find it. Uh, Maharaj, uh, can you um, re um, repeat that? It's Brahma Samhita. The Brahma Samhita. Canto 5, you said. No, not Canto. It's Brahma I'm sorry. Yeah, it's the fifth chapter, obviously, the only chapter we have, and it's verse number 59. Okay, let me see if I can, fifth chapter. Uh, Let's go to Brahma Samhita, that's all. Yeah, Brahma Samhita 559. Five. Don't, don't pick up five, just promise to meet the 59. Oh, found it. Thank you, Krishna. Okay. Um, where is that linky? This one, this one, I think this is. Marge, is this it, Marge? Yeah, read it. Read it. Um, okay. The highest devotion is attained by slow degrees by the method of constant endeavor for self-realization with the help of scriptural evidence, theistic conduct, and perseverance in practice. Perseverance. Perseverance in practice. Mara, shall I read the purport too? Yeah, it's okay. Siddhanta Saraswati's purport. Okay. Evidence, the devotional scriptures, example, Srimad Bhagavatam, the Vedas, the Puranas, the Gita, etc. theistic conduct, the conduct of pious persons, sadhus, who are pure devotees, and the conduct of those pious persons who practice devotion to Godhead, actuated by spontaneous love. Practice to learn about the 10 basic principles, dasa mula, from the Shastra and on receiving the name of Hari, as laid down in the same, embodying the name, form, quality, and activity of the divinity. 
to practice the chanting of the name by serving him night and day. By this are meant study of the Shastras and association with the Sadhus. The tenfold offense to holy name ceases by serving the name of Hari and simultaneously practicing pious conduct. Practice is no other than following the mode of service of the name practiced by the sadhus without offense. By perseverance, sorry, by perseverance in such practice. Wait, 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 wait. Perseverance, not perseverance. perseverance. Thank you, Marge. I always pronounce that word so bad. Perseverance in such practice and devotion characterized by love which is the fruit of spiritual endeavor, makes her appearance in the pure essence of the soul. Now, that Bhakti Siddhanta is purple. It's a little, a little hard to understand. But basically, those three elements are the essence. And practice is the, is the, is the means by which one attains to, to success. The is the conduct, the, kind of, the etiquette of a Vaishnava. Perseverance in practice means determination according to the activities performed. And uh, scriptural evidence means following the right path. Scriptural evidence comes from Guru, comes from Krishna, comes from the Sadhu. So Krishna sums up the whole thing in, those, in that statement. That's Krishna speaking. So perseverance and practice really means determination. And Bhakti Siddhanta takes it to another level saying, characterized by love, perseverance and practice and devotion characterized by love which is the fruit of spiritual endeavor, bhakti makes her appearance in the pure essence of the soul. Mm. So I brought that verse up just to let you know that everything is mentioned in those three principles as far as the activities of a Vaishnava. Behavior, etiquette, knowledge, and direction guided by scripture, and determination and execution the act of the activity. Mm. Thank you so much, Varaj. And Nashringalila has a follow-up question to Namrata Mataji's question, and then we'll go to Prima Bhakti Prabhu. Um, Nashringalila asks, just a follow-up on Namrata Mataji's question, does it mean that mentorship system can help or Shiksha Guru after a Diksha Guru's departure? Yeah. Yeah. The mentorship system can stay in place, yeah? The system is good. Did we lose Maharaj? I'm trying to. After he leaves. Maharaj, we lost you for like about 10 seconds just now. So we actually missed what you said, Maharaj. I, I, said, I said, why would it be any different after the guru leaves? I hope that helped Nashringa Leela Prabhu. There's a question from Prima Bhakti Prabhu. Please go ahead, Prabhu. Yeah, to bring you back to the gallery. Uh, 
Prem Bhakti Prabhu, you can go ahead with the question, Prabhu. Thank you, Ji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, my obeisances to you, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and all the devotees present. Maharaj, it's just a quick uh, quick one, um, uh, a follow-up uh, from uh, Sri Devi uh, about the uh, garland making. Uh, I was reading this morning in the Krishna book about uh, uh, Sudama, <laughs> when he made uh, a garland for Balram and Lord Krishna. You know, how he was fixed in his uh, devotional service as well, and how the Lord, you know, gave him benedictions, but he didn't want any benedictions, he was supposed to be uh, the servant of him, you know. I thought that was really nice. Uh, this is true love. <laughs> yeah, the devotee is not looking for anything on the personal level, they just look, let me serve. So. Yeah, and spread spread the word, Krishna conscious to other service people. means without motivation. Huh. If you're doing service to gain something, that is fruit of activity. That's tinged by the mode of passion. That's mixed bhakti. Hmm. <laughs> Mixed and of course the Lord the Lord reciprocates, you know, he's a super soul, you know, everything that the devotee is undergoing. It's true. It's very kind. Yeah. Even if our service is not uh -huh. the best quality that the devotee is trying to serve. And then Krishna will accept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Krishna is kindness comes to the spiritual ministry. But Krishna is also very kind. He may exhibit that kindness directly or through his representative. Mm -hmm. Kindness means, although we're not qualified to serve Krishna, still. We're getting the opportunity. Uh -huh. okay. Who are we that we can serve the Supreme Personality of God? The mm -hmm. cause, the causes, the sunam bonum of all who exists, the all powerful feature of existence, the, the person who is eternally the source of everything, who's the mm -hmm. creator, who's the maintainer, who's the destroyer. Who's a facilitator? <laughs> we serve such a personality. We don't have even the slightest bit of qualification. But Krishna is so kind that even though we are so inept and so much deficient, still he accepts our service if we simply try to serve nicely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, can I ask one question if, if it's not too late for you? No, I'm okay. The thunderstorms are brewing over here in my port. Oops. Okay. That might cause... <laughs> I didn't want it to affect your internet connection, Maharaj. That's why yeah. I asked. We might say goodbye without saying goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marge. I'll be quick, Marge. Marge, you mentioned the word, uh, you mentioned just now that we have to be diligent in executing devotional service. Marge, what actually does it, does it mean to be diligent? Be on top of it. Mm. Use a very... Really ordinary statement to put your full attention into it. Thank you, Marge. Marge, would you, um, before we end, I would like to ask devotees, I'm thinking about the storms in Mayapur and Marge losing connection here. Um, there, are there any questions from devotees? Any comments, uh, clarification that you would like to ask Marge before? 
um, as Mar said, we say goodbye <laughs> without saying goodbye. <laughs> Are you sure, it, man. Go ahead, break you, my Except husband. Except for how many days this all goes to your fault, but um, thank you, first of all, so many points that came out in this lecture. And I also have to um, excuse, that's for excuse, because I know I'm not on camera. There's this problem with my back, look at my backside, so I can't really sit that easily. It's more painful. That's why I'm lying down. But anyway, that, that's not the reason for call. Um, going in. The, when you talk about diligence in service, and now that, I mean, 20, 30 years ago, I never thought about that. Whatever service you do, just do. But now that the body is giving some problems, so sometimes my timing and services are off because of what the body is doing to me. But I'm also going through this guilt feeling that, you know, it's like you could do it this time, you didn't do it this time. So my mind is bothering me about that. So what's the best thing to calm the mind down and do the best that I could do? That's yeah. my question. Because of old age. I think many of us experience that, that as, as we get a little older in age, the body starts to uh, become more uh, or becomes less functional. Energy becomes a little harder to acquiesce. Or for whatever reason, we may be experiencing some disturbance caused by the body or even by the mind. All we can do is pray to Krishna and call out to Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, just pray. my dear Lord, I want to serve you, but it's so hard. <laughs> Please show me a mercy. Thank you very much. Thank you. I go through that also. Yeah. His answer means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, a, it's an answer that I've been struggling with too. Not the answer, it's a situation that I have to face at times too. And the disturbance is caused by the body. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then that's why Fuller Shekhar uh, you have the prayers by Fuller Shekhar uh, on this you? Maraj, I don't. Is, would it be on Vedabay or can I just Google it? Uh, actually, you mentioned I knew immediately what you meant. But anyway, since if you have to look for it, you have to look for it. Because he was talking about while his body was sound, yeah. you know, let him, let him die right away rather than get old and then can't do much. Right, that's the essence. Krishna to the Paravan, wait to seek the Mave, Raja Hamsa. Krishna to the, I think it's verse number 35 in that series of prayers by Kula Dekar. Hmm. The database where you can just look it up. Uh, Krishna Maharaj, is it Mukund Mala Sotra? Yeah, that's it. So I have the book if if you want me to read. If you can find that verse, Krishna Tudi, I think it's 35. Hare Krishna Maharaja, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. I think it is also in the purport of uh, SB2421. Uh, I think the verse, that's nice. That's Prabhupada's just reference to that, right? Yeah, if somebody could read it. Mukunda uh, Malastotra is the actual title of the word. Mukunda. Uh, I can read Maharaj if you know. Yeah. Krishna Tudia Padupankaj Panjarantham Adveva Meva Vishatu Manas Raja Hamshaha. 
प्राण प्रयाण समय कफ वात पित्त ही कंथा अवरोध विध स्मरण कुतस्ते माय लॉर्ड कृष्णा आई प्रे दैट द स्वान ऑफ माय माइंड मे इमीडिएटली सिंक डाउन टू द स्टेम्स ऑफ द लोटस फीट ऑफ योर लॉर्डशिप एंड बी लॉक्ड इन देयर नेटवर्क otherwise at the time of my final breath when my throat is choked up with cough how will it be possible to think of you is that from the bhagavatam or is from is from the uh, from the mukunda maharaja maharaj that is from the purport of uh, that bhagavatam verse mm-hmm. Marge, I'm still trying to find the book. Actually, uh, Marge, can you tell me the verse again, Marge, please? Dear Krishna, what number is it? Ah, uh, Shrimad Bhagavatam two four twenty one and Mukundamala Stotra thirty three. Thirty three, Mukundamala Stotra. I have the Sanskrit, but I, I'm looking. Oh wait, okay. Um. I think I found it. Give me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Maharaj. Let me see. Okay, Maharaj. I found the verse in Sanskrit right here, and I have to go to the bottom to find the. Is this it, Maharaj? Krishna Chudi Bhavankaja Paranjaran Tam Madhvaita Mevisitu Manasaraja Hamsam. Praya prayana samaye kalpa vakta pita tanta varo da vidu maranam kutas te. And the English is somewhere here. There it is, Maraj. On the bottom somewhere. Thirty-three. These beautiful, beautiful prayers. O Lord Krishna, at this moment, let the royal swan of my mind. Enter the tangled stems of the lotus of your feet. How will it be possible for me to remember you at the time of death, when my throat will be choked up with mucus, bile, and air? Wow. He he wants to go right now. Say <laughs> <laughs> that. Imagine. <laughs> Just thinking about this, I I am actually thinking, will I ever remember the Lord at the time of death when I'm going to be choked up, Krishna Chaitanya? I mean, as we get older, the the body starts to exude all of these nasty substances in the most profuse quantity. <laughs> These prayers are really nice. Bob, I love this prayer. He would quote it. <laughs> In fact, Marge, I was thinking that you know, by these prayers, how will it be possible for me to remember you the time of death, being choked up? And I was remembering that is the that is the importance. That, that's why it is important. that we have devotees around us at the time of death that will be chanting the holy name because our hearing is still there that that will kind of force us force the hearing you know right maraj um we want that association around you who are, which are very focused not somebody who's there crying that's the worst thing <laughs> throw Take the criers and throw them out of the room. <laughs> That's the last thing you want when you're going to somebody crying. Thank you, Maraj. Any other questions from devotees? Any clarification? Yes, Namrata, go ahead. just a quick uh, comment gumaraj uh, this uh, mukund mala stotra i have just read the three uh, not three ten text but i am so in love with this book this is really amazing i i mean the prayers of kul shekhar are uh, each and every purport is like uh, you know you keep on reading 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 and uh, 
these are really amazing and I, I'm so glad I found this book. Thank you. You're, you have gone deep into one of the most deepest of all expressions of bhakti. King Kulu Shekhar was so absorbed in the Lord that when they would read him the Ramayana, and he was a king, and he had a large army also. When the battle scenes would be read, at the time when they were reading the Ramayana to him, he would get so excited and, and jump out of his seat and call his armies, Ram's in trouble, let's go help him. And he would gather all his armies and all his armies would freak out. You know? <laughs> he, he would just lead the armies down the road and they were thinking, <laughs> you know. So after a while, they stopped reading those sections to him. So he wouldn't, you know, organize the whole army just to go to help run. <laughs> he, this, these, this is an actual fact. He was so absorbed in it that he would actually see himself right in the middle of that pastime. And being a king, he thought, I can help Ram. I got to, you know. Yeah. Yes, Guru Bharat. As you're saying it, I'm remembering. He would call out, I'm coming to Lord Ram. He would call out what? He would call out to the Lord saying, I'm coming to help Lord Ram. He would say, I'm coming, I'm coming, like that. He would call out very, very uh, loudly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, that, that bhakti. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mamata, for such a wonderful class. Nice discussion, lovely questions. I hope we all learned a lot, make notes from it. Um, Marsh, would you like to end with the round or is the storms getting pretty bad? And I think. Well, I still have two more rounds to complete for my Ekadasi chant. Today's Ekadasi, right? Uh, for us was yesterday, Maharaj, on oh, the East Coast. Oh, okay. Well, here we are in India, it's today. And I don't know, is Europe today also? Yeah. It is. Okay. Maharaj, it is today, yes. Yes, most of, most yes. Of us, UK. Most of us are in the Akadasi. So, yeah, let me get a moment here and uh, be right back. Thank you, you Maharaj. Devi. Oh yes, Guru Maharaj. Any any luck with that endeavor that you're supposed to be doing? Guru Maharaj, I have been completely preoccupied with my patient, and now that he's a little stable, I'm going to start doing my search. I look cursorily. I haven't found it, but now I'm going to go through every box and every suitcase, which is still pending. Okay. I'm really hoping someday I'll hear that good news that I found it. Yes, Guru Maharaj, me too. I'm praying every day to Lord Hanuman. He's right here. I'm begging him, please help me to find it. Okay, so... Everyone sit up straight and try to focus on the sound and begin by praying to the uh, giver of the holy name, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jai Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Nityananda. Sri Advaita Gitada Rishivasadi Gaur Bhakti Hare Krishna. Thank you.
Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Thank you. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hari 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 Kr
Thank you so much, Mike, for such a wonderful class and for your association. And thank to all the devotees for joining us. Vanchakapatibhyascha, Kripa Sindhu Beva Chapati Tanam Pavanevyo, Vaishnava Namo Namaha, Shila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Chandramali Swami Ki. Jai. Here I am in the Holy Land. Without association with the devotees in America. Okay. Maharaj, please pray for us when you are in Mayapur, Maharaj. Please, please pray for us so that we can continue to search our spiritual master and share Prabhupada's mission. Yes. Hard times are coming up on the material level, but keep it going. <laughs> Guru <laughs> Maharaj, can, can I ask you something? I have, I'm, uh, well, I'm encouraging all the devotees to come together regularly in big kirtan. The only thing that we can do is to push back the effects of Kali Yuga and to stay free from uh, all of the difficulties that we may encounter. And it'll keep us fixed on Krishna and it'll raise our consciousness. The holy name is so powerful. And when it's done together with devotees and kirtan, it purifies the whole atmosphere and the Kali Yuga just disappears. So we, we need to bring our devotees together. Don't think, well, I go, I go to my temple once a week and that's enough. 
We should be thinking every night of the week, let's get together and have kirtan, a little prashadam, and associate with each other and try to inspire others to do the same. This is the only thing that's going to save us from the effects of Kali Yuga and keep us happy in the holy name. And the more you chant, the easier it gets. I wanted to keep going because it's so nice, but I think I've got to go to work. <laughs> so I stopped. I didn't want to interfere with your schedule. I know you're just beginning your day and there's things to do. So, but anyway, try to see the importance of chanting the holy names. It's, it can't be emphasized enough how important it is. And so we can always do it in our small groups or in the temple, anywhere, even with our immediate family. Thank you so much, Maharaj. The holy name. And it's as and it's so inspiring that so many of the young people, the youth. That is all they do, Maharaj. They they just come to it together and they have a kirtan jamming session. That's all they do when they're together. And it's interesting how, it's like, if we look in the in the material world, young people of the age they'll be in the movies or on the pubs or something. But our devotee youth, when they come together, they just start chanting, and it's such an inspiration for us. Yeah, I was just told a couple of days ago. Every night here, there's a group of young people doing kirtan somewhere uh, in Mayapur every night. And Prabhupada will be pleased and Krishna will be shower his mercy. Sorry, Thank you. you something? Uh, I... I'm sorry to say that, but I think you have a pet in your room. You have a very big lizard crawling down, uh, up there. <laughs> it went. It went behind the box. Yes, I'm so sorry, but I saw it. <laughs> very big one. Very long one. <laughs> okay. That's India. <laughs> I understand. I know. <laughs> They're not that dangerous. It was in Ghana too. We had plenty of them in Ghana. Yeah. If you go near them, they get scared and they run away. Yeah. They run away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they get scared. They don't get. They don't get near people generally. No, they no. don't. No. But I thought maybe they, uh, then uh, it will eat up something that you have. Uh, maybe it's uh, important up there. That was I. I thought maybe it's going to eat up something. Yeah, it's cardboard maybe. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. I, I just I couldn't help. I saw. <laughs> no, I didn't see him, but I believe you. <laughs> thank you so much, Marge, and thank you to all the devotees for joining us. Marge, before the storms cut us off and we cannot say a proper Haribol, we would like to thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you, Mataji.